Hello, as you know, I am Seema and before I start today's class, I have a new student to introduce to you. You know, we, have, we already have Stormy and this is Stormy's sister, Cloudy. So she is the new addition to our classroom. So Cloudy, Cloudy, hello honey, say hello, say hello. So Cloudy is the new student of the class. Cloudy, look here, look here, look here. Look there, Cloudy, Cloudy, isn't she cute? So Cloudy is going to study chemistry too and let me tell you she's really intelligent. She's, she's going to score really good marks. She'll understand all the formulae. She's a quick learner and as you know we already have Stormy. Stormy and Cloudy. So Stormy is Cloudy's elder brother and both of them together would study now. So this was my little little animal class that I wanted to show you before I start teaching you today's topic. Hey say hello guys. Say hello. Say hello. So let me welcome you to part 7 of this chapter electrochemistry. Today I'm going to talk to you about how we can calculate equilibrium constant from Nernst equation. We've been doing Nernst equation and we did a few numerical problems based on Nernst equation too. And we also learned that the later part of the Nernst equation after the log is what equilibrium constant or Q that is uh, reaction quotient, reaction quotient is. And therefore from equilibrium, from this Nernst equation, the equilibrium constant Kc can also be calculated. So let's study how can we do that. If we take a Daniel cell, you have zinc and copper electrodes and the reaction that is taking place in the Daniel cell is that zinc is getting oxidized at the anode, copper ions are getting reduced at the cathode and zinc gets oxidized to zinc ions and the copper ions get reduced to copper metal. Now, if you have the conditions that are standard, that is when all the concentrations of the solutions are one mole per liter, when they are molar, unimolar concentrations, at that time, the E0 cell for Daniel cell with this reaction is 1.1 volt. But if you remember when a reaction that is reversible takes place, what happens is that the amount of zinc ions that is being formed goes on increasing and the amount of copper ions which are being consumed, therefore copper ions keep on decreasing while the concentration of zinc ions goes on increasing. Ultimately, equilibrium is established where you find that all of a sudden the concentration of all the species becomes constant. When the concentration of all the species becomes constant, at that point you feel that there is no reaction occurring and at that time what happens to the voltmeter that has been connected as the concentrations of the uh, as the zinc ions kept on increasing and copper ions kept on decreasing the rate of the reaction kept on decreasing as a result of which the electricity that was recorded it keeps on decreasing or the voltage it goes on decreasing until at equilibrium when no apparent electric current is passing through the uh, through the entire cell we find that the reading the E cell becomes zero so at equilibrium E cell that is the EMF of the cell becomes equal to zero if E cell is equal to zero then we know according to Nernst equation E cell which is equal to zero is E naught cell minus 2.303 RT upon NF log of Kc, right? Because now we are talking of equilibrium. At, this, at equilibrium, the concentrations are equilibrium concentrations. And therefore, instead of Q here, you have Kc. And we put 2.303 because we took log at the base 10. And to convert Ln to natural log, that is log to the base 10, you have to multiply by 2.303. So now, E0 cell, according to this, on rearranging this equation, E cell is 0, therefore E0 cell minus 2.303 RT upon an F log zinc ions upon copper ions is equal to 0. So this can be rearranged and written as E0 cell is equal to 2.303 RT upon NF log of the Kc. 
but this concentration at equilibrium whatever is the ratio of the concentration of the products upon concentration of the reactants both of these are solids therefore their concentrations are one and they don't matter so this value is actually Kc and that is why you can calculate Kc from Nernst equation if it is present at equilibrium if we assume that the temperature is 298 Kelvin and we substitute the values of R, 298 Kelvin for T, N is 2 for this reaction for Daniel cell and Faraday's constant. When we substitute all these values, it comes to be equal to, E0 cell becomes equal to 0 0.059 volts upon 2, where 2 is N, log Kc, because this value is Kc. And we know that E0 cell from the table, we know E0 cell for Daniel cell is 1.1 volts. Therefore, this E0 cell equal to this much should be equal to 1.1 volts or we can say 0 0.059 volts upon 2 log Kc is equal to 1.1 volt. Since we get this equation now, you can calculate Kc from it. So log Kc would be equal to, from this you would say, log Kc would then be equal to 1.1 upon 0 0.059 into 2, 2 goes up. That is what we get here. And when you calculate this, log Kc comes out to be equal to 37.288. Now, if this is 37.288, Kc is equal to antilog of 37.288. Naturally, it would be the antilog because you're removing the log now. And this is equal to 2 into 10 to the power 37 at 298 Kelvin. So you could calculate Kc from the Nernst equation. So, Cloudy is here again to study. So, Cloudy comes back to study. So, we have Cloudy, she's going to study. So, we say if we try to get a general equation now, the general equation would be E0 cell for any reaction. Now, it need not be the Daniel cell, for any cell would be equal to 2.303 RT upon NF log Kc. But what is the condition? That the reaction should be at equilibrium. The reaction that is taking place should be at equilibrium, therefore E cell should be equal to zero. Only then this would be applicable. Right? So now there is this one solved example which I'll explain and with that I'll wrap up the video. The question is, you to cal it is example 3.2 of your book. You have to calculate the equilibrium constant of the reaction. Copper solid plus two silver ions, they give you copper ions and twice silver. E0 cell is given to us which is equal to 0 0.46 volts. So give me a moment, I'll clean up the board and we'll solve this numerical problem. Now this is a question which is absolutely similar to the example of Daniel cell that we did. Let me repeat the question now. You have to calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction where copper is reacting with silver. Copper is getting oxidized to Cu2 positive. So it is losing two electrons. If it is losing two electrons, it means the value of N for this reaction will be equal to 2. Because according to the stoichiometry of the reaction, silver, you will need two silver ions to receive those two electrons. Each silver ion receives one electron and gets reduced to silver. And E0 cell is given to us, which is 0 0.46 volts. Now we know, according to Nernst equation, E cell is equal to E0 cell minus 0 0.059 volts upon 2, that is uh, the number of electrons here, log of Kc, right? This is what we know. But since we are talking of the equilibrium constant when you say Kc, E cell is equal to 0. So this entire thing is equal to 0. So we'll say this is equal to 0. So you can rearrange this. E cell, therefore E0 cell, becomes equal to 0 0.059 volts upon 2 log Kc. And E0 cell has been given to us, which is 0 0.46 volts. So we'll say 0 0.46 volts is equal to 0 0.059 volts upon 2 log Kc. From this, you can calculate log Kc. So log Kc becomes equal to 0 0.46, take this up, volts into 2, upon 
0.059 volts. Do you see the volt and the volt will get cancelled because Kc does not have any units. When you solve this, you will get the value of log Kc would be equal to, when you calculate this, this comes out to be 15.6. 15.6. So if you want to find out the value of Kc, if log Kc is this, then Kc would be the anti-log of this. So Kc would be equal to anti-log of 15.6, which will be equal to 3.92 into 10 to the power 15. Into 10 to the power 15. Right? So this was the solution to the problem. How you calculate Kc, that is equilibrium constant from Nernst equation. The only condition here is that it should be at equilibrium, therefore E cell should be equal to zero. And then you move ahead from here. So with this, I'll wrap up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.